This is a quick update on the morphing clock uh, problem that started last week. My clock started having issues about a week ago where the weather was not being updated. And when I put the clock back on the serial debugger, I was getting bad request errors from Open Weather Map. Open Weather Map is the service that this clock uses to get its weather. And it's referred to as an API call. And a bad request means uh, they don't like what I'm sending for information. So, I mean, the code hasn't changed in a long time, so I was puzzled why all of a sudden it was bombing. And then, interestingly enough, I have this little weather cube here that I picked up a, a little while ago. Well, this also stopped working. So that was a really good clue that it was an open weather map change, because this also uses open weather map, but I don't have the source code to this, so I don't really know what's going on inside of this little cube. But the fact that this didn't work and that didn't work told me it was a open weather map change that was going on. Um, eventually, somebody who built this clock figured it out that it's the space in the city comma country code that was causing the issue. If you have a city name that has a space in it, like Red Bank, New Jersey, it wouldn't work. In my case, my city only doesn't have any spaces, but I had a space between the comma and the country code. So I said my city name, comma, space, US, and that was the problem. The space was blowing it up. So once I took the space out, it started working. Why they changed that, I don't know. But the interesting point was when I went to the Open Weather Map site to look at the API call the documentation, they had an interesting banner on there that this API call, which is referred to as 2.5, is going away this June 2024. I didn't know about it. They didn't send me any emails about it. Uh, somebody who built this clock sent me the email. They got an email that the 2.5 API call is, is going away, so all the information was in the email. When I went back to the Open Weather Map site, now they have a banner on there saying that this call will be depreciated in June. So looking at their new call, which is referred to as the 3.0 call, it's still free. It gives you a thousand calls a day for nothing. But here's the big caveat. You have to change your account and it requires a credit card on file. So now you have to give them your credit card number. Already, I'm not comfortable with that idea. That, I think, is going to make a lot of people a little uneasy having to give them over a credit card. Plus, even though you're going to get a thousand calls a day for free to the API service, this, this clock wouldn't, by normal means, possibly use a thousand calls in a day. But you never know. There could be a bug. And it was very evident to me while doing some debugging that every time it bombed because of the city comma country code issue it was going out and making extra API calls to the open weather map so it could easily ring up a lot of API calls and then end up charging your credit card and going forward I don't want to take that chance where if the morphing clock code has a bug in it and it goes crazy because maybe they're sending back some stray data it could end up poking the server for a, you know a lot of calls and then you would end up getting a charge on your credit card. I don't want to take that risk and I don't think a lot of people are going to really like the idea of having to give them a credit card. So I'm going to move past that point and what you're looking at right now is some beta code. I'm going to use a service called weatherbit.io. Um, I did some research. This is one of the more popular weather services out there. It's not the most popular. Some of the most popular ones, the API calls, were downright confusing. And it was mostly because of poor documentation on the site. I couldn't understand what they were talking about. 
The weather bit that I owe had a very nice um, document page. It, it clearly laid out what you had to do to send the uh, get command and parse the JSON. JSON is a format of, a, of data that comes back. And the data was you know, very clearly laid out. I had a huge problem though getting that get command to work with weatherbit.io. I spent the better part of three days and I was restricted because the weatherbit only gives you 50 calls a day on the free account. So I, I depleted my 50 in like the first two hours I was debugging the code. So I had to wait another day until I could do some more testing and be more careful about how I poked the server so I wouldn't waste those 50 calls. Um, it took quite a bit of work. I finally found someone else's code on GitHub and very strange why they required this little HTTP option in the string. They don't mention that, but that solved my, my problem. So I got that working. So now I'm finally getting a working string back from them and that string is obviously going to have to be parsed differently. The variables are different. Uh, the codes are different. The weather codes that tell you if it's cloudy, rain, uh, sunny, it's all different codes. It needs a whole new table to decode that stuff. Also, what I like about Weatherbit is you don't have the city, comma, country code anymore. It's the postal code. The postal code is a lot better to deal with because my city, for example, exists in more than one state in the United States. So it was kind of cumbersome to figure out which city it is then. So with the postal code we won't have that issue. You'll just give it the postal code and in the United States it's called the zip code and it'll be a lot more straightforward. So that's going to require the web interface to be changed uh, and some other interface changes have to be made for their requirements. Uh, but with 50 a day, yeah, we won't be able to do a lot of calls, so we'll have to check it every half hour. That'll cover us for a 24-hour day. I was also thinking about maybe changing it so it would check the weather surface more often during normal hours, like let's say 6 in the morning till midnight. And then maybe after midnight, not check it nearly as often. And that would be an option. I would make that an optional switch. So that, uh, you know, while we're sleeping, we don't need to have the, the weather updated nearly as often. Maybe we could check it once every two hours or so, so we can have more API calls during the day to get more frequent, you know, weather updates. Those are things I'm going to think about, you know, how we could go about, you know, changing it. But uh, this is where it stands right now. Hopefully, I will get this all ironed out before the 2.5 API call from Open Weather Map goes away. But in the meantime, if your morphing clock is not working, it's probably a space in your city, comma, country code. So just go in and change it, put a plus sign instead of a space, and get any spaces out of the country code area, and you should be good to go.